So it's been a month since X Defiant launched, which is kind of wild how fast that's gone by already. Felt like the past year that we were anticipating the launch of the game was dragged on and every day just felt like five. But we now have that first month out of the way. In just under two weeks time, we'll be entering season one and taking a look at new content. But in the meantime, I wanted to take a look at X Defiant as a whole after one month, laying out what I think is the good, bad, and everything in between in a first month review. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below on what you think of X Defiant in that time that we've had thus far. Are you liking it, disliking it, whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you're part of that 75% of viewers not subscribed, do make sure to subscribe for more X Defiant and other FPS coverage. I'd love to have in the community as we chase down 600,000 subscribers. But for now, let's get into it. So let's start out with the good here. Firstly, I think honestly, the biggest thing to me is that I'm just having fun with it. Now, this is a subjective thing. It might not be for everyone, but to me, I've just had fun. Haven't had to care. Haven't had to try my heart out if I don't want to. It feels like a true arcade nature in just about every meaning of the sense. Like even just down to an arcade nature inherently. This game does not take itself too seriously. And for that, I love it. It also allows for so much future potential to have just fun things added to the game rather than having to fit a universal lore or like storyline that goes along as a through line for everything in Ubisoft titles. I mean, it is rumored we have a rabid season coming at some point. So like, come on, that's that's hilarious and a clear indication the game just wants to have fun with itself. Also, another huge thing about the game fundamentally is just this community first approach with clear communication. It's just it's so incredibly refreshing, I feel like, in game dev as of 2024. I'd say that the Helldivers community has also been pretty open and pretty transparent, so that's something that, like, playing that earlier in the year a ton here before the launch of X Defiance, that's something that was nice in that sense as well, but from an FPS space especially, it's just, you don't see that too often. And listen, here's the thing, I know that game devs in particular, most devs would love to tell you exactly what's happening, what's coming up, and so on, but in the sense of, like, let's just use Call of Duty as an example, I'm pretty familiar with that chain of human communication. If a dev wants to communicate something, it starts with them. It has to go through the studio comms department, who then has to pass it on to Activision comms, who then has to pass it to legal, who has to pass it either back to studio comms for their own write-up or to the Activision editorial team. And it's just this whole red tape fiasco. And Ubisoft is just seemingly cutting out tons of middlemen in that process and just being like, hey, we're going to tweet out what's happening. So for that, definitely appreciate the constant communication here and the transparency on a lot of different issues. Next, loving the community events here. Every weekend so far since launch has had a double XP event of some kind. Now, as of recording this, I have no idea if this weekend, as of when this is published, is going to have another one on top of that. I'm currently out of the country on my honeymoon. So the last week of content or so here has been pre-recorded for a little while. So unfortunately, as of recording this, I don't know that as you're watching this video now, if it is something that there's another one, might be, might not be, but still, even if not three or four weeks is pretty solid. So, been enjoying that kind of stuff. Of course, another thing that I've been loving is the freebies they've given us. There's been tons of skins so far to redeem via like Twitch drops, login bonuses, Ubisoft challenges, a lot of that stuff. So, if that's any indication as to what the future holds as well, I'm absolutely all here for it. As for the gameplay itself, gunplay to me feels fun, feels good, and feels rewarding. I feel like kills whenever I get those, like you get that little serotonin boost of like, that was a good gunfight. Game modes, I think, have a fun set of them. While things like bomb and TDM aren't in the game just yet. To date, I've still enjoyed the standard modes on offer. Honestly, I really like what they did with Hotshot. Obviously, this hasn't changed since the beta, although I didn't get to play it in the beta last year just because I was out of town during that point. But anyways, I love that little twist of adding cranked effects to it and sort of increasing that mobility, increasing that speed that you have as an operator and just the sort of extra bonuses you have with it. I feel like that's a nice way to incentivize objective play to give you that sort of like super soldier feeling. I also have a black and escort i think that's a lot of fun to play as well frankly there hasn't been any sort of game mode that i didn't really enjoy playing so far so that's that's always a good sign right maps i think are a lot of fun honestly a lot of standouts the only ones that i don't really care for are like attica heights on certain modes i forget if it's occupy or domination that i don't like off the top of my head but then also emporium just not a fan of that one altogether but beyond that honestly can't get enough of playing on all the maps on offer currently i also love the depth of the practice range i think that is something that all games should have something like this. If you're going to implement a shooting range or something, you could test out your weapons, have something that's actually worth going into like this. Personally, I think this is what Call of Duty should do from here on out in terms of their firing range. Like have something that is fleshed out with targets, recoil plots, and other things like that. Not just a long hallway with three targets in it. What I will say though is Ubisoft, you can give me back that abilities in Altruist course. I, I really want to get back to warming up my aim on moving dummies, not just the stationary ones in the firing range. Don't know why that one's closed off. Like, 
Like, I don't think there's been a reason given just yet. But, I mean, they also didn't give the firing range at all to begin with at the very start of the game until, like, a couple of days after. But, anyways, looking forward to that being reintroduced here with it. But beyond that, the final thing we'll touch on in relation to the good, because we can probably just drone on about a bunch of stuff for a long time, is, well... No skill-based matchmaking is beautiful. That sounds like a cop-out of like a pro or like a good reason here, but for the level of marketing that they use that for, it is sure nice to have in today's gaming climate. Like I've said it before, I'll say it again, I get why they're doing it in games. I personally don't agree since whenever I started playing games younger, it was a true matter of fact of like, if you want to get better, practice and improve rather than just trying to artificially keep players in a similar bubble. But what I will say coming out of it, grinding COD daily for the last five years, I'll tell you that I definitely improved during that span for sure. Like I recognize it, but it's truly hilarious to me that once you remove any sort of those skill parameters, it is insane how easy the matchmaking gets if you're genuinely a good player and can shoot straight. Like I will say, I find that parties versus parties do become a bit more sweaty, but it's awesome because I play solo a lot. And it's one of those things that it, it kind of became a chore the last couple of years in the FPS space to play solo. But honestly, this is like for the first time since Black Ops 4, I can play solo and I kind of prefer playing solo. Granted, team balancing will always take effect. So if I want to win, I'm kind of having to carry my team, but I'm almost at least always still having a good game beyond that. But it's just, it's insanely refreshing to have this type of matchmaking and play in 2024 when every game seemingly has adopted some form of altered matchmaking to elongate player retention, to grab as much of the player base for as long as possible. It's just refreshing. Now, moving over to what I'd say are some of the bad out of this month here, this first month is, truth be told, before we jump into the list, I'd say the amount of things in terms of bad isn't as large. Like, we don't have a laundry list in terms of quantity of items, but I think they're like larger things that cover a lot of the bases. The first and immediate one that comes to my mind and probably yours as well is hit detection and net code. It's still not in a good spot. Hit reg if a player isn't dying, net code if you're dying around walls, gunfights can feel inconsistent. I felt it personally. You guys surely have as well. That's one thing that it's it's kind of stating the obvious because they are working on it they're going to continually be working on it but it's just one of those things that like we had this year of delay that we kind of thought that that would be fixed out by the point of the launch but it hasn't really been so i mean it's a progressive thing where it's going to take time surely but i'd say that's like one of the biggest issues that has fundamentally plagued the game since launch now beyond that the next thing that comes to my mind is a lack of grindable content long term weapons are of course a grind and everything but after a month you've probably got your favorite weapons chosen and picked out and leveled up so beyond getting them bronze silver and gold there's not a whole ton to do other than just play, which is great and totally fun for sure, but for some people, they like to have a goal in mind whenever they go in and play. So whenever there's not that type of thing, it becomes something that you start to lose maybe interest in the game. Right up front here, there really isn't a whole ton in regards to grindable content. You have those base mastery camos. I'm looking forward to seeing those additional mastery camos in season one. I think that if you were to introduce like operator mastery uniforms and stuff like that, that could really help out. They stated they don't have a plan for it, but like if you were to get every gun gold, you get another camo on top of that. I feel like it would be cool to go for. There's a bunch of things that you could add in in terms of like just true player progression, but right now it's just not there. So at the moment, that lack of sort of grind of content up front yeah first couple of weeks it was you just grinding real hard at it but as time has progressed you might not have as much to do anymore so that's one thing that i'd chalk up there as well another thing is more so cosmetic based in terms of talking about other content shop prices to me are way too high i think that what we have right now is a sort of mismatch in price versus what you end up getting for the price that you'd see in the x defiant store it kind of looks like you'd be getting a lot more content but as of recording this for example right now you end up having the viral bundle for 2500 x coins which is just about $25. For $25, you get one cleaner uniform, a sort of player card animation, and one skin for the MDR. That's it for 25 bucks. You can also look at it. There's plenty of just simple character skins that are a thousand X coins, $10 for a weapon skin as well. There's a $6 player card in the shop as of recording this as well. So like that kind of stuff, I feel like you either need to increase the amount of things you get per bundle or bring the prices down for the amount of items in said bundle or for the individual item. And as we'll touch on in a video that I already have recorded in regards to like some things I'd change that if I had a magic wand and I could change a bunch of stuff about X Defiant, one thing that I said here in this in regards 
regards to the pricing for these store items is that I'm no economic genius, but I feel like if you bring those prices down, more people would buy them as opposed to paying for a higher premium for that. Like, I feel like you'd make up that differential in revenue, if not even more, if it was cheaper. But I guess that's why I don't make the big bucks. Anyways, beyond that, this is subjective because I know it's just how I play and others play differently, but I feel like some factions have a lesser balance of worthwhile traits. Like, for example, Echelon is so good for me because I love having those pings and intel on where enemies are. So for that, I don't really need to use anything else, and especially when I think about, like, the faction of DeadSec. I don't think that I have any plans to play DeadSec again because the spider bot doesn't do much for me. The EMP, I just feel like, isn't as useful for how I like to play, and I can only reprint grenades. So, like, to me, I don't, I don't, it's an 0 for 3 on how I like to play the game. And like my rankings right now, I might be the only one thinking it, but I feel like there's a very clear balance of two very good factions, two that I probably won't use, and then a third one that's just like right in the middle that if I want to play objective, it's good for that. But anything else, probably wouldn't take it. So this will probably change as we, of course, get more factions as the year progresses, but that's just one of those things right now that it's a, it's a strange imbalance on how the factions and abilities end up working out. And then I think where we're going to wrap this up is on this last point. It's not the end of the world, but one thing that is a totally valid criticism, I think, is that it's, it's the same game that we have today as we did last year during the betas, minus a few balancing passes and subsequent mechanic changes. I think for a lot of people initially, that may have been the off-putting nature of the game because while the delays were, of course, needed to fix the social and party systems to rebuild the netcode, which of course still needs work and we will see work on it for sure, but to the players who don't follow the game, the players that don't pay attention to any sort of gaming media and know these types of things and know how critical in nature those fixes were to the game and it just wouldn't function properly without it, well, to those people, What's different? You know, to a casual player, and it's almost kind of funny with the debates around gaming lately to say casual player with X Defiant, but to the casual player who doesn't follow closely, when you played the beta last year to where you are now, it is a totally valid question of, wait, what, what changed? So I think this is less of a worry going into the future, given we're going to have about a map a month on average, multiple weapons a season, and now we're sort of building the game out from here. But just that initial sticker shock of this preseason kind of being what we played already a year ago, kind of still continuing that beta state. I mean, we still are missing some core systems like stats. You don't have an actual career stat system. You don't have kill cams. There's plenty of stuff you could probably think of, but it's almost as if we, again, were in the still same phase as last year. And don't get me wrong, I'm having fun with it. Like, it's, I've had a good time, but to a lot of players, that might have been off-putting. But I think that kind of rounds out my sort of air quote bad of the preseason. It's just, it's still the same of what we may have been used to. But for now... That, I think, is we're going to wrap it up. Just want to give some thoughts here on the one-month anniversary of X Defiance. I've been having a blast with it. Hopefully, you guys are as well. But let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think here of X Defiant after one month? Liking it, disliking it, whatever the case, drop your thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things X Defiant and other things FPS related. I'd love to have in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.